pour it into that. Where would the water go? And if I did that with it, where would the water go? That's the dandy. That is the technical explanation of what an dandy is all about. Plus, you can do that with it. You can also use this very conveniently, putting a price list up on the wall. That's your menu. Okay? And if you lose something out of the drawer, you can use this. This is a fairly robust piece of kit. Okay? And when you've got staff working in your kitchens, they tend to be like that. That was Carl. Okay? And they do it all day. They don't care what they do. And when they're putting this back in, that's how they do it. So, I challenge you to do that to a truth. This piece of equipment is built for hot, busy kitchens. That's what it's all about. It's not meant to be put out the back, which you open once or twice a day. This is about being right in the middle of a kitchen operation. So, not only do you have the benefits of keeping the food in great condition, which we covered off this morning. We have the, the benefit of ergonomic access. And we learned from KFC in the early days about ergonomic access. And as the guy from KFC told me, he said, look Ian, we can only sell food at lunchtime between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Outside of that, we can hardly give the stuff away. So for us to make money, we've got to get our food out the door as quickly as we can between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. That's our revenue. So what does this do for you, this piece of kit? Well, if you walk into those food service kitchens with a box during a busy service period, there's nowhere to put it down. So as soon as you put an upright refrigerator into your busy service space, you have removed one of these worktops. So where does the worktop go? Where do you put the big upright? I'll put the upright over here in the corner. So I'm doing my preparation or I'm doing my cooking over here. Every time I need something, I'm going over here. Coming back again, over here. McDonald's say, one step equals one second. And if you count up the number of steps staff are taking inside a kitchen over a service period, and multiply it by the number of staff, by their hourly rate, it's a very simple calculation to work out ergonomically how much money you're losing. So, okay, what we'll do is we'll replace the upright with a conventional undercounter unit with doors on it. Okay? Let's understand what you get with a door. With a door, you get a series of shelves that are like that. Okay? In a hot, busy service kitchen, when you open the door, you can only reach stuff at the front of the shelf. If there's anything behind, you have to take the stuff out the front and you have to put it down somewhere. Well, we already know there's nowhere to put anything down because everything's busy. So the only part of a door that you can actually use in a busy service kitchen is the bit at the front. Okay? So the 600 litre upright fridge, you actually only use about 25% of it. It's the front part of the fridge that you use. If you've got anything behind it, it's not stuff that you're using during a busy service kitchen operation. Okay? And don't forget, you have to treat this stuff with respect. So what you have with the Adande is, as soon as you open the drawer, you have the full plan access to the ingredients that you need access to quickly. They're there. They're, they're right there as you need it. You're not looking between a shelf. So if you go back to an undercounter with a door, <coughs> 
Same problem, it's a door with shelves. To get to the product in the shelf, you can only reach the front bit. If you need to go any deeper, you're down here to reach into. Now, how long does it take you to go down on your knees, reach in, get a product out, put it on the top? Somebody's rushing past you, you're standing up, the pans are going everywhere. It's chaos in a kitchen to actually do that in reality. So, most kitchens that have doors will only be using that front part on an undercounter. Don't forget, quite tough as well. <laughs> so, in terms of technicals, how does this work? We've dealt with what this thing does. The refrigeration parts of this are identical to that. It has a compressor, it has a condenser, it has an evaporator, it has some fans in it, it has a refrigeration circuit. Very simple. What George and I did when we came into this business to start off with, bearing in mind that we knew nothing about it whatsoever, um, was we asked a few questions about what, what typically fails on a food service refrigerator. And the first thing everybody mentions is compressors fail. And George and I looked at each other and went, compressors fail? They are the most reliable bits of kit that we've worked with over 20 years, 30 years, whatever it was in the oil and gas industry. So that didn't make sense. So when we dug down a little bit deeper, it's not the compressors that are the cause of the failure, it's the condensers. The condensers are getting clogged. The heat isn't getting uh, rejected from the condenser, which causes the compressor to overheat. The compressor fails. So early attempts at trying to resolve this was, let's put a filter on that, <coughs> air intake, to clean it. That didn't work because people didn't change the filters. So we put, we sent out replacement filters, they did, still didn't change them. We sent out a replacement filter. We phoned them up. They didn't put an alarm on first. They ignored the alarm. Then we started posting them. So they got an alarm. We posted the filter. We phoned them up. They still didn't change them. And we realized we had to do something different. So on this piece of kit here, you will see that there is a gap all the way around here. And it's not because we don't know how to measure things. That is where the air is drawn in to the condenser. Okay? And the condenser is neatly located at the back here, which is reasonably easy to get to. And the airflow path is the air gets drawn in here, it goes around the sides of the bin, goes through the condenser, through a fan, comes out the front. The purpose of drawing the air in around the edge here is that the grease-laden air inside a kitchen sticks to this edge. Because you'll notice that uh, there isn't much of a gap here. So we actually force the air at quite high velocity over these edges, and that causes the grease to drop out. And also we get some just down the sides here. And with the grease, you also get, you also get uh, dust and flour and things. And they all stick around these edges. And these are your normal cleaning areas. This is where your normal housekeeping is to keep these things clean. And if you look at um, the KFC um, fillet station, for example, they bread their chicken fillets on top of the Madanda unit, so there's flour everywhere. They've got the Henny Penny pressure fryers on this side. So you've got the grease and you've got the flour, and this piece of kit works fantastically in those applications. Okay? Every couple of months, is it George, perhaps six weeks, they go in with a little paintbrush and they will brush some of the residual flour off the condenser. We do never get any problems with the condensers getting clogged up with grease or fat. So consequently, there's no failure of the compressors. So that's a problem gone. The second problem that we had was the seals, or gaskets, depending what you want to call them. So on a typical drawer, a door fridge, the gasket is always accessible, either on this space or it's on the door. And of course, we use exactly the same kind of gasket. It's no different. But the difference is 
that with the, with the door, you're tearing the gasket apart. You're actually ripping the magnet attraction away from each other. And what we've got is a lid that sits over the top of this, that sits in this section here. And this section has an insulated lid with the evaporator, with some fans, with a drain tray, and a defrost heater. I showed most of you yesterday the construction of a lid. Okay. That sits in there. In there as well is our magnetic seal. And our magnetic seal is out of the way. It sits on top of this. And instead of trying to tear this magnet apart, as you do that, we actually just <coughs> slide it. I mean, if you just try that with your powerful fridge magnets on your fridge at home, try pulling them off the wall and try sliding them off. It's much easier to slide them than it is to pull them. We also... You do it with these badges, are you? <laughs> yeah. It's easy, but try pulling them. And yeah. it's difficult. There's also an issue with, uh, with seals, which... Um, where people put boxes in or put uh, tools in that stick proud at the drawer. And we actually just introduced a very simple system of this part here that prevents people doing that. And that stops the thing tearing. The only real issue that we know with seals is if people are using the most powerful glue known to man in their cooking. And do you know what the most powerful glue known to man is? Nobody? Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice is the most powerful glue known to man. And if you get something like that stuck on the rim and you're not cleaning it, it will attach itself to the seal. But they are really about the only known Oh, that and cardboard boxes, if the lid comes up inside, that can also attach. So we basically, if somebody reports a failed gasket to us, that it's something that they're doing wrong operationally. Overfilling the drawer, isn't it? <coughs> with, uh, we've had frozen whatever. We don't tear the seal or even go through the diffuser. We have had shattered diffusers yeah. where a frozen bird is going through it like a flying saucer. And they've got to be robust. Did I mention that? <laughs> they must be robust, especially in QSR kitchens, because they don't think that they very well. He's not going to golf with again, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you look at, we've powered off, we understand why we've got the bin the way it is, we understand why you have, ergonomically, you get a very fast access to your product here. Yeah? Now I want to concentrate a little bit on um, what happens when you put food inside it. And you'll notice that there are ribs inside the bin. Has anybody got a box? Box? No. One behind there. Behind yeah. there. 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 Yeah. Right, excellent. Thank you very much. Now, if I put this box on the surface here, as soon as I do that, and I've got cold this side and maybe hot this side, as soon as I put this flat onto a, sur a surface like this, this box becomes part of the insulation. And that means that I'm going to get a temperature gradient running through the contents of this box. So I might have it at, set at freezer at minus 18, but this side of the box will be something like minus 10, minus 5. With the Adande, we've got the ribs in the surface here. The box can never sit completely flat on that surface. Okay? Obviously, the cold air is heavier than the warm air, so the cold air always goes in underneath, sits underneath your box. That means that you can throw products into this any way you like, and they will always stay cold inside it. We looked at the, um, the, the diffuser in the lid yesterday, and I showed that there was a series of slots in the diffuser lid that went typically all the way around here. Okay. <clears throat> so where does the heat attack come from when you've got this in the drawer? The heat attack comes from the outside, it comes from here. And that's exactly where we're putting the cold air in. So the heat attack from ambient comes in here, it's got the cold air coming in front of it. So the heat from outside 
never actually gets to the product. And that's it. Simple as that. And of course, <laughs> Any questions? Did that work, Dylan? <laughs> we'll get Carl to sell that one now. That's gone. Paul, we just want to. Can we take the cereal?